Good evening, everyone. You know, this afternoon, I've been hearing a lot of rhetoric. I've been hearing a lot of mess on the internet regarding foundational Black American U.S. Freeman culture. And I think that we don't really need to lay out our culture. We need to understand, we have to understand, even if we have to teach people that we are the culture. Now, we could go back hundreds and thousands of years that all life started in Africa and that we are essentially a different culture. We've been in this country, what, four or 500 years already. So we have emancipated, we have uh, separated from our African roots, not by choice, but by force. So we are a different culture. We have built a culture here in America as black Americans. That's first and foremost what we need to understand. And I think a lot of people uh, are getting this mixed up. A lot of people are stating, especially from the Caribbean and also the African continent and out of the, after, excuse me, out of the African continent, I understand there's over 50 countries and not all 50 countries state that black Americans have no culture. This rhetoric, this uh, messy way of starting inbred fighting, so to speak, is coming mostly from Nigerians, unfortunately, because believe it or not, majority of black Americans have a good percentage of Nigerian DNA. I've done my Ancestry.com and I am 22% Nigerian. Can you see the skin tone? Nonetheless, majority of people in Africa are dark melanation. It doesn't matter if you're going from Sudan on east, on, on east coast of Africa or East Africa or to the west in Nigeria. Majority of people in Africa are dark melanated people. But this, 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 um, this straight rhetoric and lies and capping about that black Americans have no culture where other people from the Caribbean African continent and even the UK come over and dilute themselves in the black American culture the way we talk the way we um the way we dress how we go about doing things they had to do that in order to assimilate to blend in with us in order to make it in this country you want to know our culture? We built this country. That's our culture. But anyway, I'm going to go down through some things here as I enjoy before I get too riled up, before I get too excited, because the one thing I love talking about is our culture and all the things that we have not only done for this country, but what we've done for this world. All right. So this afternoon, I'm going to enjoy a nice bull for people who know about cigars this is one of the most famous cigars in the world okay it's not that expensive but it's a little pricey this is probably the next best thing to a person who loves a good cuban okay let me get this started right here i'm just getting warmed up family i'm just getting warmed up 
And I don't want to bombard you guys with information that you already know of all the great Black Americans, all the great U.S. Freedmen, all the great foundational, uh, foundational Black Americans that we already know of. So let's get right into it. Let's stop the cat. Culture, arts, and other manifestation of human intellectual achievement, customs, art, social institutions of particular nation, people, or other social groups. Okay, let's get into it. So we've been called this word mostly by Nigerians. Let's keep it a buck. I have Nigerian friends. I go to gym with, with Nigerians. I have nothing against Nigerian people and hold, but I do have something against the tether class. I have something against those traitors. I have something against those turncoats. I have some against those disrespectful Nigerians who like to use this term because this term in Nigeria, not only this definition of it, but it simply means wild animal. It states here that Akata is a derogatory term used by West African immigrants for African Americans. I pointed this out that I think it was um, New York Undercover or New York, one of the movies that Wesley Snipes played in right around the time of New Jack City, okay? It says there are two meanings, cotton picker and fox. But also, people will also tell you that this means wild animal. Let's get into it, family. So let's talk about the Black American culture. Let's talk about all the artists, because I know first and foremost, people gonna say, okay, you guys can sing and you guys can play sports, and that's pretty much all you guys can do. That's only a piece of our culture. This part of our culture family has been the most influential in the world. Your Marvin Gaze, your, 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 um, I forgot the guy's name, I'm so excited. Let me calm down. NWA, okay? All these great people that we, um, Tina Turner, all these great people we have in our culture that have done so many things in music. And don't forget, we've almost created every genre of music, not just rap and hip hop, not just R&B, but rock and roll, blues as well, and even orchestra. See, these are the things that we need to teach our kids so people can't just lie to them. When people start to steal your history, they take away your identity as a people. Right now, um, there's a lot of rhetoric on the internet that uh, Puerto Ricans and Black Americans and Jamaicans and Black Americans created hip hop. No. Uh, black Americans are the sole creators of hip hop. Other groups came after. It's almost like stating, hey, yeah, man, I built a house. The only thing I need to do now is put in drywall. And you helped me put in drywall. So you say, yeah, man, we built that house. Wait a minute. What about the foundation? What about the framing? What about the layment of the bricks and the sidewalls and a roof? The house was already built, family. Yeah, you possibly helped with some drywall. Okay, you put in a sink or two, but you did not create hip hop. We've almost created every genre of music. That's right. I said we created rock and roll. Okay. And we know who the godfather of soul is. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We know who the godfather of pop is. We know the kings of these, Michael Jackson, Prince, uh, Little Richard, all of these people that you guys are aware of. And that's just music, family. That's just music. Let me move on. We talked about NWA. I can name one rapper and shut down the entire world. I can name one rapper and shut down the entire world, Jay-Z. That's all I gotta say. I don't gotta say Jay-Z and Nas. I don't have to say Kanye West. Okay, I don't have to say Tupac and Biggie because you already know, family. I don't have to say Lauren Hill. We have the greatest people on this earth. Don't let nobody nowhere ever tell you that Black Americans don't have the culture. We are the fucking culture. Not only did we build this shit, we created most of the things in it. Not only did we create most of the things in it, we're the most influential people in it. That's right. We have been suppressed and oppressed, but we continue to shine. And we're going I'm going to show you how we shine each and every day. Here's some black American orators. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Frederick Douglass, Booker T. Washington, Colin Powell, Thurgood Marshall, Harriet Tubman, Barack Obama, just to name a fucking few. 
excuse my language you don't like people cursing but that's okay i'm i'm hyped up today i'm tired of this bullshit on the internet we either be in clubhouse um, um would it be on twitter all, all these people twitter banging they up here twitter fingers twitter banging uh leaving comments everywhere and they don't understand our culture they don't understand our history we probably know more about african history than some africans that's right i said it what's going on therapy swag that's one of my therapy brothers right there born majesty we all the culture thank you sir Drico said, if you know about Liberian slavery, that's why Africans look at Black Americans the way they do. I had an African tell me that. We are revolutionaries. He said, yes, yeah, always a war on Twitter between Black diaspora. It's nonstop. Thank you. Uh, see, BC Space said, Akata in the durable language doesn't mean what it says on Google. Some people are pushing Akata as a derogatory word just because they were from African language. See, it really doesn't matter because anytime you have a group of people from a particular country and words and definitions change over time they manifest and they transform over time because of the certain way people use them so if they want to use the word "akad" in a negative term then guess what it's a negative term so it really doesn't matter so here's some civil rights leader because we have to bring up civil rights civil rights leader and i'm not stating that africans don't have civil rights leaders in which they do but this is part of our culture as well. We have to we have to talk about, we have to bang on every tenet of Black American culture, of U.S. Freeman culture, of foundational Black American culture. Yeah, you see your Michael Max, your Herrick Tubman, your Sojourner Truth, your Rosa Parks, your W.E.B. Du Bois, and Michael Max, just to name a few, family. I'm not going to be here long because I want to give you, I want to make sure this is impactful but people can pick it up and go around their regular day. Let's hit it. Now, I also want to talk about Black American painters that you guys may not be familiar with. You see a lot of Black art, and I'm just going to show you a couple of pictures here that you guys may not be familiar with. But there's two artists that I'm going to harp on um, that's in our generation, the you know, Generation X, so to speak, and also millennials. But this is a lot of Black art that people don't necessarily give credit to, that we must give credit to. Okay. I see this is taking a very long time, but name some of the old school artists and painters. We see um, Augusta Salvage, Edamona Lewis, Jacob Lewis, John Michaels. We have James Van DZ, um, Henry Tanner, Faithful Ringgold, Golden Parks, and Kyra Walker. This, I'm just naming a few of each genre because people don't understand that culture is a composite of all of this. Now, one of my favorite black artist is Charles Bibbs. As a matter of fact, I have some of these very same pictures in my living room, upstairs and downstairs. Some of these famous pictures, I'm just going to scroll through here very quickly. So some of you guys who may not be familiar with his work, I'm a big advocate of Charles Bibbs. I love the way he um, really highlights black culture. You see the one with the Wings family? I have this one in my bedroom. If you guys ever seen me take from my bedroom, you will see that on the back wall. I make sure I face that picture because that is black excellence. That is black beauty. And that is what you call foundational black American culture. Now, I want to make sure no one contradicts me. I'm not stating Africans don't have no culture, but I'm tired of the narrative and perspective that's being pushed from the African and Caribbean uh, land masses, mostly Nigerians, not all, mostly Nigerians, stating that we don't have a damn culture. Evidently, you didn't take the time to research any of our history to see if we had a culture before you open your mouth. Yeah, this is the Akata speaking. Also, Lori Cooper. If you guys are not familiar with Lori Cooper's work, I have about three or four paintings of Lori Cooper in my house. 99% of my paintings in my home are Black American. Why the one percent is a little bit of African, um, African mass, as well as this one huh, thick thighed Italian woman that I, I didn't throw that one away. I, I like that one. I'm gonna keep that. One. But nonetheless, majority of my paintings are Black American paintings. Laura Cooper is an artist born and based in Philadelphia, PA. She received a bachelor's degree from University of Arts and received her master's degree in fine arts from University of Pennsylvania. She tries to highlight the inner and outer beauty of everything that she paints. 
Okay, let's move on, family. I'm going to read your comments. Don't worry about it. I got you, family. Now, these are pointing out Black American warriors, Black American soldiers. I had to throw these guys in here because a lot of times people want to know, hey, how did Black Americans contribute to this country? Because you have the system of white supremacy to think that no Black Americans, oh, the only time Black Americans fought in a war is during the Civil War so we can get be free from the Southern and Northern states. Don't, don't just think that slavery was occurring just in the Southern states. No, no, no. Uh, slavery was United States wide family. It was United States wide. So here, here are some of the wars that we fought in. As you can tell, uh, the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, which is the American, excuse me, the Mexican War, the American War, the Civil War, the Spanish American War, World War One, World War Two, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Gulf War, the War in Afghanistan, and the Iraq War. We have fought in every major conflict that this country has had. You guys heard the term of Buffalo Soldiers. They wouldn't have won that post. They wouldn't have won that fort without those Buffalo Soldiers of the 54 Massachusetts. This is our culture. We have a culture of fighting. We have a culture of art. We have a culture of dancing. We have a culture of creating. We have a culture of building. We have a culture of inventing. This is our culture. We're going to move on. We have all sorts of accolades. Anytime that Black Americans indulge themselves in any sport, in any arena, we become the best. It doesn't matter if it's baseball, track and field, boxing, tennis. It doesn't matter. Like, And I'm not speaking about her because her family lineage, Serena Williams, I take nothing away from the sister. She is great. She was actually, I think she was either born in Jamaica and brought over here at an early age, but I won't count her contributions to Black Americans, but I will count Arthur Ashe when it comes to tennis. When it comes to golf, we already know that Tiger Woods, Black American father. Was his father Black American? I don't know, but I know Tiger Woods is Black American. Nonetheless, we, we, won't, we won't divulge too deep in this because we need to understand that we have a plethora. We have a great many of Black Americans who are great in everything that we do. And we always stand out because the rest of the world, and also including the system of white supremacy, wants to figure out how in the hell do all these Black people become great and famous where we've done almost everything to keep them down. We've done everything to sabotage them. We have um, we have polluted their water. We have burned their cities. We have bombed their houses. We have implicated them wrongly and just it in the, uh, uh, the criminal justice system. We have done everything against these people, but these motherfuckers keep rising up. They keep poking their head out of the basket. Even though that some of us within our own community have the crab mentality, there's a great few of us that tend to strive, that tend to be on the forefront of greatness. This is who we are. Don't let nobody tell you don't have no culture, family, because you do. Let me move on. Here's some other professional athletes in, in case you forgot. Will, uh, Will, Wilma Rudolph, as I stated, Arthur Ashe, of course, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Jack Johnson, Bill Russell, Jesse Owens. I talked about Tiger Woods, Aletha Gibson, all these great people, family. I'll be, listen here. If I went down all the genres that culture actually involved, we would probably be here a good three hours and I'll still be trying to speak really fast like I am now. Now, I'm going to take a quick break here so I can slow down and then I'm going to get back to it. Quatman said, what they really mean is that they are just ignorant about our culture. Okay. That, that's what they really mean, but they do it very derogatory, so it makes us backlash. It's kind of like if you've been beaten so long and you kind of just been taking it, you like things are going to get better, they're going to stop, and they don't stop because political parties like the Democrats keep allowing this shit to happen, keep allowing people to come over here and set up shop to push Black Americans so they can no longer um, need our vote to be in power. When things like that occur,
He says they all up in their feelings now because we are shoving our culture down their throats and reminding them that our success is not theirs. Absolutely. You can no longer tail tag with us. Oh, no, no, no. You can no longer ride on the back of the bus while we drive it. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. And here's another thing, family. No one was thinking about marching about uh, in, in the new age of discrimination, police brutality, injustice, unfairness, until Black Americans were on the forefront as soon as they killed one of our brothers right before our very eyes on videotape. We sparked a new world order around the world where melanated people from everywhere started to march against their own government. Who did that? Black Americans done that. But that's not the first time. This is our culture. We are the ones who lead rebellions. We are the ones who lead revolts. When you look at all these other places, they have onesies and twosies. We have continuous, systematic revolts. Kwakman says they big mad that in addition to sports and music, our culture includes fighting for rights, art on all levels, fashion, academia, problem solving, and creative innovations. Absolutely. Man, he's spitting hot fire. While they choose to believe that 1% of us poor and in the ghetto, we continue to rise. Indeed, we do, brother. We were also the first people in space. Yes, we were. Now, let's get to the heart of the matter. Because it's easy when you talk about black Americans, it's easy to talk about sports. It's easy to name all the greats in music. We can have the diaspora wars when it comes who created hip hop. We already know who created it. We know who invented it. But this is where the rubber meets the road right here. When it comes to engineers, scientists, and inventors. This is what people really need to know about us. Not that just we can bounce a ball, not that we can catch a ball, not that we can hit a ball. It doesn't even matter. Put the balls away, fellas, pun intended. It states here that most people have heard, let me blow this up for you guys. Most people have heard famous inventions like the light bulb, the cotton gin, and the iPhone, but there are countless other often overlooked inventions that made our daily lives easier. Among the creative inventors behind these devices are black American inventors, are black American inventors. From the traffic light to the ironing board, see a list of products that have sprung from the minds of black inventors, okay? You understand that Sarah Boone made this back in 1892. We have uh, Marion Van Britten. She made the first home security system there in New York. If you guys look at right here. Okay. She made the first home security system. Not Brinks. Not ADT. Not Ring. Not Arlo. <laughs> no. Marion Van Brown, her and her husband made the first home security alarm system there in New York. That's who created it. That's who created the first one. Okay, we all know this young man right here, Gerd Morgan. Gerd Morgan, I'll tell you, I'm just gonna read this a little bit about him because most people say, oh, he invented the trifolite, but that's not the only thing his brother invented, okay? So excuse me as I read this a little bit to you. He also invented the new improved sewing machine and he invented the gas mask. Now, one of the contributions that this brother made, not only did he put on his own gas mask and go into a, a, a building that was on fire and save a bunch of white people, he didn't even want people to know who he was because they probably wouldn't believe he made it. That's that brother right there. And he also came up with the first three light system for the traffic light. I believe the first version was in England. It only had two lights and they was having all these other types of accidents. And the brother's like, hey, this... I'm going to make a traffic light, just add a middle light so people understand when the light is changing to slow down, it gives them an indicator versus go and stop, which is very simple to us, right? It was very simple. I mean, just throw in the third light. And that's why majority of the time, even in your business meeting, what you use, green is good, slow is tentative, meaning that we need to probably work a little bit more to get to green and then red, we, we're below the numbers. Everybody knows that, right? What about this brother right here, Frederick McKinley? He says, if your refrigerator has any um, produce from your local grocery store, then you can credit a black American inventor, Frederick Jones. Jones took out more than 60 patents throughout his life. 
including okay including a patent for the roof mount and cooling system that used to refrigerate goods on trucks during extended transportation in the mid 1930s family not only that the company was critical his company that he built called thermo king was critical during world war ii helping to preserve blood food and supplies during the war the brother was even helping out the war even though they didn't even want us there they didn't even want us there and we still contributed to winning all those wars what about alexander miles the use of the elevator in everyday life keeps people from committing to long and grueling climbs he's the one who made the automatic um elevator doors close okay it says here before automatic doors people had to manually shut both the shaft and the elevator doors before riding forgetting to do so led to multiple accidents as people fell down elevator shafts as the story goes when the daughter of a black american inventor alexander miles almost fatally fell down a shaft he took it upon himself to develop a solution in 1887 he took out a patent for a mechanism that automatically opens and closes elevator shaft doors and designs are largely reflecting elevated use today. So I want you to think about without this young man right here, without this young, great black American, foundational black American right here, it probably be people still falling down the elevator shaft, okay? Now, this one <laughs> is close to my heart. As any YouTuber, we are always looking for the best sound equipment, the best microphone, which, um, excuse me, family, I didn't, let me get out of this. Um, that way, your audience, your supporters, your subscribers can hear you clearly. Yes. James E. West. He gets credit now. A lot of people thought that uh, Japanese people made the first microphone because of karaoke, but that's not true. It states here that the vast majority of microphones used today, including the microphones used in phones and cameras, use a microphone co-invented by a black man james west was tasked with creating a more sensitive and compact microphone while working at bell labs in 1960s i'm gonna jump right down to the meat and potatoes only four years later the new microphone that james west created was in wide production it was being held was being used in hearing aids tape recorders and telephones and also baby monitors yes yeah, so all you baby mamas out there all you Susie, Becky's, Keisha's, and Aisha's, you can thank your boy James West for making those baby monitors. And for you guys who are hard of hearing, you can thank him for the mics inside the hearing aids. One of my favorites, Louis Latimer, which I'm pretty sure the brother created the light bulb himself. They try to give credit to Thomas Edison. And what people don't understand, Thomas Edison was not an inventor. He was a businessman. He's the one who probably funded the project. He got together a lot of inventors and they came up with the light bulb. They talking about it was perfected by him, okay? It says that the innovation used to create long lasting light bulbs was a carbon filament came from a black American inventor, Louis Latimer. Latimer, the son of a formerly enslaved people, began work in a patent law firm after serving in the military for the union during the Civil War. He was recognized for his talent, drafting patents, and was promoted to head draftsman, where he co-invented an improved bathroom for railroad trains. So when you on the railroad, you take an Amtrak, you taking um all of these trains from around the world, even when I was in Korea, you can thank your boy Louis Latimer for creating bathrooms on trains. Okay. Now, one of my other favorites, I believe this is Mark Dean. Okay. Mark Dean. He worked for IBM and during his tenure at IBM, let me tell you what he did. It says Dean began working for IBM as a chief engineer in the early 1980s, making up a team of 12 people who would develop the first, the first IBM PC. In addition to helping create IBM's original machine in his early years, listen, listen to this, because that was in 1980. Then it states that in addition to helping create IBM's original machine in earlier years, earlier years with the company he also worked to develop the color monitor okay so we're talking about the monitor that you guys are watching me on whether it be on your phone your computer or your tv and led the team led the team that developed the first gigahertz processor the massive chip built in 1999 will allow for higher processing rates at faster speeds within pcs 
That's your boy, Mark Dean. And I can't, I, I can't stress this thing enough that we're going over Black American culture. We're going over U.S. Freedman culture. We're going over foundational Black American culture for those people who may not know. And no, George Washington Carver is just not the peanut guy. Call him the potato chip guy. Call him the soybean guy. Because without George Washington Carver, if you guys didn't know, George Washington Carver created plastic out of soybean. Did you know that? Did you know that you can, that's why they tell you for men, soy um, has a high estrogen level. And if you eat too much soy in your diet as men, that is when you develop man boobs, okay? Because soy was never meant for consumption. It was meant as a quick and fast to create plastic. And this again was during the war. There's a lot of things that black Americans invented simply because the war. We wanted to what? Help the country that we built. Joseph Lee, the bread kneeling machine. This is pretty much a machine that creates breadcrumbs. I'm just gonna go down the list here. Alpha Crayle, the ice uh, ice cream scoop. You know the scoop where you scoop it and then you gotta use that extra little um, handle where it gets the ice cream scoop because it's sticky, but we also created as black Americans, ice cream in general, okay? Here we go, Frazier McKinley again with refrigeration, okay? It says, and listen to this. In 1935, Frederick Jones created the first portable refrigeration units making it possible to transport partial items, including foods over long distances. Now, this is the one that's gonna blow you guys' mind for you guys didn't know. If you don't mind, family, I I'm just gonna make sure I can get a hit here. How many of you have had famous Amos cookies? How many of you have famous Amos cookies? Did you know that it was a black man? See, here's another thing, family. I can't go over all of our greatness. See, I could have spent time on music, which we already know. I could have spent time on sports, which we already know. But I love to spend time on those intellectuals that change the world as we know it. Pretty, pretty majority of Americans, anywhere from 25 to 55, has had famous Amos cookies. That's what we're not aware of. Famous Amos was a black man family. Let me move on. And I'm going to read some of your notes. I haven't forgot about you. Because I had one more. I had one more little list up here. That I, I wanted to get to very, very quickly. Because we have to point out in the liquor industry. Right. Uh, don't forget. Where's the guy's name? Give me one second. I want to get to the guy real quick. No, no, no. This is the same list. Well, let me get to the guy. I'm going to let you know. They call him, what's his name? Uh, Uncle Ernest. And then correct me if I'm wrong, family. I get his name mixed up sometimes, so correct me if I'm wrong. But he is the one who created Jack Daniels. And now his family found the information, won in court, and now they're receiving royalties and proceeds. And then they kind of did a spinoff and use a different recipe and made, oh, excuse me, Uncle Nearest. That's what it is, Uncle Nearest. He, and he was the creator and founder of Jack Daniels, but he never got credit. Because back then they took credit away from melanated people. They took credit away from black Americans. There's so many inventions that we created that we still don't get credit for and the world may never know. That's another problem. So let me, last but not least, this brother right here. Emmett McHenry. Anytime you guys are on Google, Microsoft Edge, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, Brave, whatever search engine that you guys use, you can thank Emmett McHenry, a foundational Black American. And for you immigrants out there, this is what you call Black American culture, inventors, creators rebellious, revolters. All of this is our greatness. This is our culture, not just music and sports family. But it says here, Emmett McHenry invented, or did he invent the internet? It says it wasn't until, it wasn't until Emmett McHenry created a complex code. Uh-oh, he's an intellectual. He's smart. He knows how to code. What, a black American? The Akata? 
which allowed any person the ability to search the internet and use email services without having to have studied and be knowledgeable in computer programming. McHenry did the work for us, officially creating what we now know as the .com, the .net, and the .edu, and so on and so forth. Family, you just got a freaking blitz course in Black American culture. Let me see what your notes are. I see Quad Man is blowing up the chat. I'm going to read some of your things here, fella. It says here, they big mad that in addition to sports and music, Okay, I think I went over there, family. Just reading some of his notes here. They say they know how powerful we are. This is why they got their tethers and bootlegs working overtime, but they're not louder than us. Absolutely not. Moses West is about to send his atmospheric water generation device out to Mississippi. Yeah, that's the guy who essentially, and I wish I had that prep. Thank you for pointing that out, brother. This is the guy who created a machine that needs to just run off a generator that captures moisture from the humidity in the air and make it potable drinking water. Interesting, is it not? He's literally creating water, the source of life, out of thin air. A black American. Look at these damn Akatas. They acting a fool. These damn Akatas... Let me tell you, and look at all these lights I got around here, fam. I got all types of lights around here. Every time I think about a light, I think about Louis Latimer. Oh, shit. My God. Ben Carson did the first successful separation of coin joined twins. Absolutely. We're not going to talk about Ben Carson's political affiliation, but absolutely. And then we could talk about Vivian Thomas. Vivian Thomas is another Black American male who uh, developed a procedure to correct blue baby syndrome. But we're not gonna talk about Charles um, Drew with, uh, you know, um, blood transfusion. We can go on and on and on about all the great things that our black American doctors have curated, our black American inventors have curated, our black American scientists have curated. See family, you can list a, a, a bunch of these in the chat and we it just be too long because we have to understand that in a very short time of 400 years all the things that we are making now today like the brother point out where we at let me point this out again this is very important like the brother moses west created the atmospheric water generation and basically that's saying that he's generating water out the atmosphere lord have mercy in your soul the akata has done it again <laughs> the akatas he said we got Poland threatened to sue Germany for reparations. <laughs> okay. So when we look at all the great things that we did, family, this is our culture. Don't let, don't never let no one tell you, not even your own kind tell you that black Americans have no culture. My son is aware of all this information that I just gave to you because I beat this shit down his throat. He better know who he is and know the greatness that he come from so he can know to be great. That is why all these other groups are trying to steal our history because they understand if they can, they will steal our identity and thus steal our greatness. No, you will not. As long as foundational black Americans live, I know that my people will inform the world how great we are. I wish a mother would try to tell us we don't have no culture. You come over here, you dressing like us, you talking like us. They even have you acting in movies like us. Family, I can go down a lot of these movies where when you start reading the names, most of these names are Nigerian. I was just watching a league, a league of their own. It is a prime video special. And unfortunately, which I don't like, usually like to watch, it has to deal with the whole LGBT community. And I really thought it was about women baseballs back in the 40s and 50s. And I knew they had a black star. So I started watching it. And the black star in the, in the movie is part of the LGBT community. And then her co-star, Perk, the other black co-star, is a black Nigerian. Go figure that. But she's playing a black American. 
and, and just like the most famous, the most famous from the UK, by the way of Africa, that played a black American that fooled all black Americans was Idris Elba in The Wire. When we saw seeing him, see, he couldn't make a way over in the UK. He came to America, blew up, right? Because of the fight that our forefathers and civil rights leaders have done, got an opportunity. That's what we create for ourselves. We create opportunities to be great. Got an opportunity, did well. The brother can act. He's very talented. Have nothing against Idris Alba, really talented brother. Then they allowed him to do movies in the UK. <laughs> oh my gosh. Park man says, job our medical class. Oh, I say marching man got the one white man that got to run down the field and try to bust a move like a black drum major. Uh, the sentence of chaos and controversy. I think this is, is this Lisa D? I don't know. Like the ex officer who did security and was killed in Buffalo, New York, who was developing a hydro engine. And for quite some time, there was a uh, there was a uh, black guy about 50 years ago who was running his car off of water. And what I believe he created was what which um, what they call an HHO separator. So water, we understand, is two parts of hydrogen, one part of oxygen. He created a capacitor, some sort of apparatus that while the water is cycling, he separates the hydrogen from the from the oxygen, which creates the water, but it extracts the gas to fuel the car. I'm not that smart. I'm, I'm not nearly as smart as that brother. Just thinking about it blows my mind. Just like uh, the guy Moses West creating the atmospheric water generation, just capturing water out of thin air. Can you? Family, I get choked up about our culture. I get choked up about our history, our present, and where we're going in the future. Don't let none of these people tell you don't have culture. I, I don't care if, if they are European, white Europeans, black Europeans, white Africans, uh, black Africans. I don't care. Don't let no other group tell you how your people do not have culture that you didn't uh, that you, you guys did not contribute to anything yes the hell we did i would like to let all people know it don't matter what walk of life what ethnic what creed what religion what spirituality what food you eat i don't care that black americans are the culture of this world not just america of this world we've made many contributions and you know what i can dive a little deeper than that since all life created in Africa, all the great things that Africans did, we come from that greatness. Like the Ugandans creating the first procedure for C-section. Like many of the different African countries that invented the first irrigation system where they was making trenches to have water to filter in into their crops automatically. And they made shutoff valves and small dams, their own irrigation system. Because you know what they say, man, we're getting tired walking five miles to the water source and bringing them back to do our crops. Let's just dig a ditch and put a little separator in and have the water filter in and fucking water the, water the crops. That's the ingenuity we come from since Africa is the, is the start of all life. We're 400 removed from Africa. So not only can we account to our greatness, I guess we can count that too, can't we? <laughs> this is the Akata, the empire strikes back. <laughs> I told you I'm on one family, I told you I'm on one. I'm not even drinking, yeah, I'm still drinking water. I don't drink till the night. Mm -mm -mm. Three day weekend, gotta love it. We got Quap man, he says, all them African led movies and TV shows are flopping now that we are boarding kind of wherever they are starting in. You absolutely right. You absolutely right. And you know what? I didn't even talk about entertainment as far as acting, all the great American actors. I didn't even talk about um, all our comedians. And again, we have to stand that comedy is cultural. And let me hop on one more thing before I go. keep hearing this term African booty 
booty scratcher. I hear a lot of African immigrants, mostly African immigrants, talk about when I was growing up, Afri African Americans, Black Americans used to rag on me. They used to call me African booty snatcher. I, uh, scratcher. I was called an African um, booty scratcher. I was called a uh, tar baby. I was called one minute after midnight. This is what we call the dozens. In DC, we call it joning. In other places, they call it clowning and ragging and banging. We have all of these things within our culture that are a part of us. Uh, sometimes if you joned on somebody, which means ragging and clowning, DC term joning, when you join on somebody so bad, sometimes this shit ended in a fight. But most of the time, these things was a, a bonding of friendship because man we'll be joining next thing you know we throwing the ball around man we'll be joining next thing you know we playing a uh, basketball again we be joining we going to the ice cream truck man look at your shoes man and we even got called the same thing we grown folk now why are people still bringing up about that old shit are we not mature now i have never heard and, and even in my 20s i haven't heard anyone call somebody an african booty scratch man stop And here's another thing. Culturally, you guys dress different when you come here, right? You guys dress different in Africa, which I totally understand. But when you come here, we're like, oh, what are those? You wearing jeans, sweat socks, and penny loafers. <laughs> and a turtleneck. Nah, bro. You wearing, hold on, hold on, man. Cause here's another thing we talk about cultural uh culture I, can, I mess up the whole word culture where you guys have these very beautiful african garbs and and culturally worn uh garments that you guys wear during ceremonies and weddings and um, um, um funerals you guys wear it ceremonially but you guys don't wear that every day you you wear it to church you wear it to weddings, you wear it to events and functions, but you don't wear it every day. Uh, most Africans I see wear their everyday clothes that black Americans wear in Africa and wear suits, just the same as we do. So let's throw clothing out the door, but I'm telling you, the next time, okay, I haven't joned on somebody, I haven't clowned somebody, I haven't ragged on somebody in a very long time, but the next time, I don't care who the hell you are, if I see you wear jeans, Sweat sock and penny loafers. <laughs> I'm going to let you have it. I'm going to fire that ass up. Also another DC term. We're going to fire that ass up. What we got over here? Family, in all seriousness, we have to understand that the system of white supremacy has had melanated people around the world to really start on a wider, broad division. They want, what's going on right now, they want us to be divided because they understand that 90% of the world is melanated. Not all African descended, but majority of the world is melanated. And the white European Caucasus Mountain is around 10%. And the way to power is to divide people. Once you divide people, you can conquer a people. So in all seriousness, we have to understand the bigger picture. But at the same time, foundational Black Americans, U.S. freedmen, Black Americans, do not let anyone disrespect you or the culture you come from. You guys have a great and wonderful day. I'm out.